Hello, guys. Welcome to this rapid fire again. We are going to talk about Jane Austen onwards, as you know. Join me fast. Hi, Archa. Hi, Shailesh. Wonderful to see you, all of you. We are going to talk about Jane Austen onwards. And we'll also do uh, Victorian poetry. I'm fine, feeling wonderful. Tell me, Jane Austen was born in the same year as another writer. Which writer? Jane Austen was born in the same year as another writer. Which writer? Good evening, everybody. Tell me the answer. Jane Austen was born in the same year as another writer. Thank you, Kirti. Thank you, Amrita. 1775. 1775, same year as Charles Lamb. That's right. 1775 to 1815. That's right. Jane Austen and Charles Lamb were both born in 1775. Jane Austen was born in Hampshire. Hampshire is a place where Keats also lived. Steventon. She was also associated with Chawton and Bath. These are the places. Um, thank you, Divya. These are the places Jane Austen was associated with. Um, Steventon in Hampshire. Charlton and Bath. These places have Jane Austen museums. I've been there. I'm going to start a course on free course on uh, travel and English literature. Okay. Uh, let me ask you now. There was a, a novel that Jane Austen wrote when she was only 15 years old. Which is that novel? Steventon Rectory. Correct. Stevenson nahi. Steventon. Which is the novel that she wrote when she was only 15 years old? Hello, Jyoti. Which is the novel that she wrote when she was only 15 years old? It is Love and Friendship. Love and Friendship. That's right, Carolyn. Love and Friendship. Which is her first written novel? Which is Jane Austen's first written novel? It was only published posthumously. Hare, the professor is by Charlotte Bronte. First written novel, I mean, Love and Friendship is not a proper novel, it's a burlesque. The first proper novel that we know. Hi, Manjot. Hi, Ganesh. Love and Friendship is, no, no. Sense and Sensibility was the first published novel, but Northanger Abbey, Caroline and Archer, Northanger Abbey uh, was her first written novel. It was published posthumously. Which are her two posthumously published novels? That's right, Anima Das. Persuasion, Northanger Abbey and Persuasion are her two posthumously published novels. The first written novel and the uh, last written novel. They were both published posthumously. That's right. Manjot, what was published in uh, 1711? Her first published novel was published in 1711, and that is Sense and Sensibility. That's right. Sense and Sensibility was her first published novel. Uh, 1811, not 17. She was born in 1775. Sense and Sensibility. Are I made a mistake. It's 1811. Very good evening, Dashrath. 1811. Sense and Sensibility, first published novel, 1811. What was the original title of, that's right. Uh, what was the original title of uh, Sense and Sensibility? What was the original title of Sense and Sensibility? 
Thank you for pointing out my mistake, Divya. Yeah, by a lady. That's right. By a lady. That was how it was published. First intended title was no. First impressions is Pride and Prejudice. Eleanor and Marianne. That's right. Eleanor and Marianne was the first uh, intended title of Sense and Sensibility. Mm. The second published novel was Pride and Prejudice. Pride and Prejudice was originally titled First Impressions. By a Lady is not the title. It was uh, anonymously published, Sense and Sensibility by a Lady. That was not the title, that was a pseudonym. Okay, now uh, Pride and Prejudice was the second published novel. Tell me in which year was Pride and Prejudice published? In which year was Pride and Prejudice published? It was published in 1813. 1813 is the year of publication of Pride and Prejudice. In which novel do you have the Dashwoods? In which novel do you have the Dashwoods? The Dashwoods are in Sense and Sensibility, Eleanor and Marianne Dashwood, right? Eleanor and Marianne Dashwood, that's right. And uh, there was something about um, Sense and Sensibility that is of the 18th century. He, she was influenced by the sentimental tradition of Samuel Richardson. And uh, Sense and Sensibility uh, was originally intended to be, I mean, Eleanor and Marianne was originally intended to be in what form? Hello, Vijay. Based on uh, Samuel Richardson, she wanted, uh, she wrote uh, Eleanor and Marianne in what form? She wrote it in epistolary form. She wrote it in epistolary form. That's right. You're telling me a lot of answers, a lot of points about these books. That's wonderful. Uh, Eleanor and Marianne. Eleanor stands for what? Marianne stands for what? Yeah, letters. Hi, Sanjay. Wonderful that you're watching. Wonderful, wonderful. So many of you said the correct answer. Novel of letters. That's right. Eleanor stands for what? Marianne stands for what? Eleanor stands for sense and Marianne stands for sensibility. That's right. Eleanor stands for sense and Marianne stands for sensibility. And which is considered better by Jane Austen? Sense is considered better. I know Divya. Divya, wonderful. Then uh, tell me, mm, Eleanor marries whom at the end? Eleanor marries whom at the end? Ha, huh, Sonali, you said it. Correct. Shailesh, Kavita, everybody's right. Kirti, Archa, Rojalyn, yeah. Tell me, whom does Eleanor marry at the end? Their love affair is very quiet. She marries, hello Priyanka. Are correct, Edward Ferrar. Edward Ferrar, F-E-R-R-A-R-S. Edward Ferrar is, uh, she, uh, Eleanor is marrying Edward Ferrars. And uh, whom does Marianne marry? Whom does Marianne marry? I'm so happy that there are so many right answers. All of you should answer. If you don't know the answer, just copy paste. <laughs> yes, Marianne marries Colonel Brandon, Colonel Brandon, but she uh, falls in love with somebody first. That is John Willoughby. John Willoughby, she falls in love with, but that turns out to be a mistake. You know, the good guy was Colonel Brandon. Okay. Um, in about Pride and Prejudice. From where, from which book did um, Jane Austen borrow the title of Pride and Prejudice? From, from which book? Uh, Sandishan and Watson also, incomplete novels, that's right. 
from which book did uh, Jane Austen borrow the title Pride and Prejudice? Neha is laughing. Raja Rajeshwari said it, Cecilia, Cecilia by Fra Fanny Burney. The title Pride and Prejudice was borrowed from Cecilia, Memoirs of an Heiress, correct, by Frances Burney. Tom Jones uh, had a story set in Somersetshire, like that which county was Pride and Prejudice set in? Pride and Prejudice was set in which county? The novel Pride and Prejudice is set in which county? Like Tom Jones was set in Somersetshire. I'm waiting. It is Hertfordshire. Hertfordshire, very good. Hertfordshire. You know that the opening line is famous. It's a truth universally acknowledged that a man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a dash. Fill in the correct word. It's a truth universally acknowledged that a man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a dash. I know all of you would say this. It's coming. Like a waterfall, I know it's coming. It's in one of a wife. He's in one of a wife. Correct. The Bennets are uh, living in which house? In Pride and Prejudice, the Bennets are living in which house? What is the name of their house? So many of you are telling, telling me the correct answer. That's wonderful. Hi, Benit. Hi, Shalma, Suresh, Ranjana. I know cyclone in Odisha. It's terrible. So many calamities everywhere. Let's all pray for the well being of our people. Long born is correct. Sonali, Koyal, correct. Beneath. Uh, you love this novel. I love this too. Uh, they live in Long Born. Netherfield Park is the House of Charles Bingley. Netherfield Park is the house of Charles Bingley. And uh, uh, what is the house of Darcy calls? Darcy, it's okay, Zafar. Better late than never. Please take care, everybody. Wherever there is trouble, please take care. Prayers for the well being of everyone. I hope that this kind of activities that we are doing is bringing some happiness to you. Bingley is Netherfields. Thank you, Ranjana. Pemberley, I'm so happy Sonali said it. Hi, Bijana. Uh, Pemberley is the house of Darcy. And what is the name of Darcy's aunt? Who's a very stuck up upper class woman. She is looking down on uh, Elizabeth. She doesn't like Elizabeth. What is that woman's name? She is scolding Elizabeth. Lady Catherine de Bourgh. Lady Catherine de Bourgh. She is the um, uh, patroness of uh, Mr. Collins. Right? Mr. William Collins, the cousin of uh, the Bennett sisters. Yeah, Lady Catherine de Bourgh. Please like the video if you can. Please like the video. Mr. Collins marries Charlotte, Elizabeth's friend, Charlotte. It's a marriage of Dash. Mr. Collins marries Charlotte. It's a marriage of Dash. Do you know? The marriage of there are many marriages, many kinds of marriages. Thank you, Raki. There are many kinds of marriages uh, in this novel. Mr. Collins just marries Charlotte as a marriage of convenience, marriage of convenience, and they live in which place? Marriage of convenience. Goyal said it. Marriage of convenience. No, Carolyn, it's not security. Convenience. Yeah, they live in which place, which um, 
our Elizabeth visits along with the gardeners. Kent, it is Kent. They live in Hunsford in Kent. Okay. And uh, what is the name of the guy who elopes with uh, Lydia? Elizabeth nearly trusted him. That guy who elopes with Lydia. It is. Wickham, correct. Wickham, Wickham. Wickham elopes with Idia, Lydia. And which one of the sisters is always playing music and uh, she is a little pretentious. She is pretentious. She pretends to be very learned and she pretends to be uh, playing music. Thank you, Sanjay, for reminding everyone. Will you please uh, like this video, press the like button. If you don't want to, it's okay. If you want to, please do it. Not forcing you. Even if you don't press the like button, I'll still continue to do this. But I'm not coming to your place on webinar tour if you don't like, okay? Aha, yes, Mary, you're telling me the correct answer. Mary is pretentious and she's always playing music and she is, thank you, Ranjana. And she is a um, little stuck up. Thank you, Zafar. Um, what is the name of the other sister? I did not mention one sister at all. What is that sister's name? One sister, I did not mention what is her name. Thank you, Kirti. Thank you, Shalma. That is Kitty. Kitty is the other sister. Okay, what is the name of the heroine? In Thank you, Shri Kuti. Uh, oh, Carolyn. That, so you don't have to like any day. Now, uh, what is the name of the heroine in Mansfield Park? Thank you, Cham. What is the name of the heroine in Mansfield Park? She's a poor relative living with her uncle and aunt. Yay, that character is Fanny Price. Fanny Price is the heroine in Mansfield Park. And they are living uh, in Northamptonshire, okay? Northamptonshire. If you are doing detailed study, you should also know the features of these places, okay? For example, Bath is about um, rich people, young people. There is a lot of uh, trade and commerce happening in Bath, okay? Uh, what is the name of the uncle's family? Not Edward Burton, Ranjana. You did not tell me the right answer. It is not Edward Burton. Uncle's name is Bertram. Bertram. The family is the Bertrams. This uncle has plantations. He's a colonial planter. He has plantations in which place? He has slave, he's engaged in slave trade and uh, Edward is a cousin. He has plantations in which place? Bertram has plantations in Antigua, Antigua, correct. Fanny and her cousin Edmund are the only um, moral people, okay? All the other young people are very immoral. They are engaged in uh, extramarital and premarital affairs. That is uh, very bad according to Jane Austen. Okay. And what are the names of the other people? Uh, it is her cousins, uh, Julia and uh, Maria. Maria and Julia. And there is another brother and sister. What is their surname? What is, yeah, Fanny is in love with Edmund. Uh, what is the name of the other brother and sister? They are the Crawfords. Henry Crawford and Mary Crawford. They are very immoral. Yeah, Tom also. Yeah, Tom also. Now, what is the name of uh, the surname of Emma in Emma? Emma's surname. Emma's surname. Are not Norris. Emma's surname is 
Emma Woodhouse, Woodhouse. In which place does she live? In which place does she live? Thank you, Vijay. It's because I'm screaming here. I'm speaking very loudly here. Yeah, they live in Highbury. Emma Woodhouse lives in Highbury. Not Emma Watson. What is that, Pragati? That's wrong. Whom does Emma try to get married to? I mean, there is a girlfriend of Emma whom she tries to fix the marriage of. What is that girl's name? What is the girl's name? Emma's friend. Harriet Smith is the answer. Emma's friend is Harriet Smith. Sonali is laughing. Harriet Smith. Harriet Smith already had a suitor. The Q pads are uh, absolutely amazing uh, objective question banks. The Q pads, we have eight question banks full of thousands of questions and explanations to answers. If you want Jankari about it, please WhatsApp me. Harriet to Robert, yeah, Robert, Martin, Robert Martin. But um, all the marriages, all the alliances that Maria tries to fix up. Sorry, Emma tries to fix up. They doesn't work out. All the time, Emma was being warned by her friend. Emma, don't do this. Who is the man who warns Emma? Who is the man who warns Emma? That's right, George Knightley. George Knightley warns Emma. And finally, Emma marries George Knightley also. Okay, there is a very pretty, pretty woman who comes to Highbury. What is her name? There's a very pretty woman who comes to Highbury. Her name is, hi Poonam. That is, Jane Fairfax, Jane Fairfax. In which novel do you have Alice Fairfax? Alice Fairfax is in Jane Eyre. George Knightley wants Emma. Jane Fairfax marries whom? The question banks are extremely useful. Yes, Kirti, thank you. The question banks are amazing books. There are eight question banks we have. If you want details, please WhatsApp me. Jane Fairfax marries Frank Churchill. Emma nearly falls in love with him, but she is, uh, he is already engaged to Jane Fairfax. Okay, the last novel has the heroine. The last novel by Jane Austen has the heroine. Anne Elliot. Anne Elliot is the heroine of Persuasion. Persuasion. It was published posthumously along with Northanger Abbey. Anne Elliot used to be very aristocratic and rich, but then she came down. She was in love with a poor man, but her family did not allow her to marry him. What is his name? Manika, you have only three quick cue pads. There are actually eight cue pads. Anne Elliot was in love with what man? Tell me his name. That's right, Frederick Wentworth, who later becomes Captain Wentworth. That's right, Harsh Mehta, Lady Russell, her mother's friend and her sister, they do not allow her to marry him. Frederick Wentworth or Captain Wentworth. Uh, in this novel, there are two sisters who are uh, close, Encyclopedia Volume 3 is being printed. It will be ready soon. The pre-publication offer, discount offer is now running. Yeah. Uh, the two sisters who are, uh, who are close to uh, Captain Wentworth, who are they? What did you delete, Pugaranti? Q pads means question banks. They are eight books of uh, objective type questions, answers, and explanations. Paid test uh, is also there. We have mock tests. We have daily quizzes. We have question pads, means um, MCQ books. We have encyclopedia. Altogether, we have 44 books. Louisa and Henrita Musgrove, Archer said it. Louisa and Henrita Musgrove, they are the 
sisters. You know, when I went to Jane Austen Museum at Charton, all the people who are working in the museum were dressed up as Jane Austen characters. And there was also a tea shop where you could um, have tea in the manner of Jane Austen books, like it is described in Jane Austen's books. We have a mock test, we have uh, daily quizzes, we have objective question books, we have encyclopedias, whatever you want, just WhatsApp me, I will tell you. Let us not uh, talk about it in the um, rapid fire because it will disturb other people. My number is, I will text you here, 90 3735 that is my number. I'm not marketing, I'm just trying to help you. Okay, otherwise you can check out bodhitreepublications.org. Shailesh, I really think you will qualify for JRF. I'm sure you will keep on studying. All of you who are studying, I'm absolutely certain you're gonna get JRF. Keep on studying, don't give up. Don't be defeated, you should get JRF. You don't have to buy my books if you don't want to, but just study somehow. I'm sure you'll get JRF and I'll be very happy. You'll have awesome careers. Just try your level best, okay? Yes. Uh, now, uh, let me ask you, uh, what is the book that Catherine Morland keeps on reading? Catherine Morland keeps on reading one book and she's very influenced by it, very greatly influenced by it. Which is that book? I'm praying from my heart. May you all pass. May you get JRF. It is not essential that you spend money or buy my books. I'm not trying to say that. I want you to pass, that's all. If you want, you can buy my books. If you don't want, absolutely okay. Mysteries of Udolfo, not Castle of Otranto, money God, that's wrong. Anne Radcliffe's Mysteries of Udolfo. Anne Radcliffe's Mysteries of Udolfo. That is what Catherine Morland is reading. Okay. Now, Catherine uh, Jane Austen wrote Domestic Realism. Remember, Domestic Realism. Let me ask you some questions. In which year was Essays of Elia published? In which year was Essays of Elia published? I mean, as a book, collected and published. 1823, that's right. 1823, Essays of Elia. Elia was a pseudonym, yeah. Which is the first uh, essay in Essays of Elia? Thank you, Shihabuddin. Uh, if you want to join my class, just WhatsApp me, please. 1823 is right. The first essay is the South Sea House. The South Sea House. Paper one also. Please text me. I will do whatever I can. Uh, I'm going to tell you the titles of uh, Charles Lamb's essays. I'm telling you the beginning of the titles. You complete the title, okay? That's the game. The Old Benchers of... Complete the title. The Old Benchers of... Complete the title. The old benches of the inner temple. The old benches of the inner temple. A dissertation upon Savita. Plus, please text me. I will let you know everything. Just WhatsApp me. That's right. A dissertation upon roast pig. He was talking about pork there, pork. A dissertation upon roast pig. The superannuated, the superannuated man, the superannuated man, poor, poor relations, poor relations. That's right. Dream, dream children, dream children. <laughs> Now tell me quickly, who wrote Table Talk? Table Talk is by William Hazlitt. William Hazlitt. 
in table talk there is an essay called the indian in table talk there is an essay called the indian jugglers jugglers right which is the book written by william hazlitt and lee hunt which is the book written by william hazlitt and lee hunt that is the round table the round table correct the round table now tell me who wrote the spirit of the age the spirit of the age william hazlitt william hazlitt i promised you we will talk about victorian poetry also tell me which is uh, the first published poetry collection by tennyson published in 1830 first published poetry collection by tennyson published in 1830 do you know that it is poems poems chiefly lyrical poems chiefly lyrical okay first published works by great writers you should know will you please like the video if you have not done it okay there was a poem that he wrote tennyson wrote when he was only 15 years old there was a poem that tennyson wrote when he was only 15 years old that is armageddon later he reworked armageddon he rewrote armageddon what is the name of the book that is a rewriting of armageddon the book that is a rewriting of armageddon Ah, Timbuktu. That is right, Snigdha. Timbuktu. Timbuktu is about Africa. Okay, Timbuktu is about Africa. Which is the poem by Tennyson based on a character from Mesha for Mesha? Thank you, Pugrandi. Which is the poem by Tennyson uh, based on a character from Mesha for Mesha? it is mariana that's right mariana which is the dramatic monologue by tennyson uh, based on paris's lover you know paris in greek mythology greek mythology paris paris's lover which is the dramatic monologue thank you so much everyone you're doing a wonderful job i'm so happy it is e no ni e no ni o e n o n e <laughs> that is the dramatic monologue okay i'm just acting like a child so that you won't be bored that's all not ulysses ulysses is not the lover of paris what do you mean tennyson also wrote ulysses tennyson also wrote ulysses wow and um, what is the companion poem to ulysses called what is the companion poem to ulysses called <gasps> they eat something and they become like drugged and they say why should we live because we everything is going to end in death <laughs> kavita is laughing thank you snigdha why they drank something they drank the um, juice or they ate the fruit uh, it is not with the glass they ate the fruit and why should we live because everything is going to die why should we work lotus eaters that's right sometimes when you attend other people's lectures you become like lotus eaters but not my lecture right when you attend my lecture you are energetic isn't it i know that which is the poem <laughs> which is the poem uh thank you sugandhi Uh, where a woman is weaving a tapestry by looking at a mirror she is looking at a mirror and weaving a tapestry she is not allowed to look out of the window but then she hears galloping horse sounds cluck 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 like that a horse is galloping and she forgets everything and she goes and looks out of the window and she is cursed which is that story which is the story that is an arthurian poem lady of shallot lady of shallot is an arthurian poem yeah uh, she hears uh, launcelot 
Sir Launcelot galloping towards Camelot. Camelot. Okay. Next is, what is the last line of uh, Ulysses that became very famous in the uh, Victorian period? The last line of Ulysses that became very famous in the Victorian period. Jitu Johnny, Highwayman is by Alfred Noyes. The last line of Ulysses, to strive, to seek, to find and not to yield, right? to strive, to seek, to find, and not to yield. That is the last line of Ulysses. Right. Which is the dramatic monologue by Tennyson about a weary soldier coming to his childhood home. A weary soldier is coming to his childhood home. The name of the poem is the name of the childhood home. Tell me, that is Locksley Hall. That's right, Locksley Hall. There is another dramatic monologue by Tennyson about a man who got long life, but not immortality. He becomes old and old and old, but cannot die. Which is that dramatic monologue? That is Titanus, Titanus. Titanus is loved by Aurora. Titanus is loved by Aurora, the goddess of dawn. Okay, the goddess of dawn. Now tell me, which is the poem by Tennyson subtitled a medley, a medley? <sighs> Hello, Allah Bakash. Which poem by Tennyson, which has a Strong woman character who ultimately succumbs to the prince has a title called a medley. It is the princess. What is the name of the princess in that book? What is the name of the princess in that book? The princess's name is Princess Aida. Aida, will you remember? There was a comic opera called Princess Aida. Comic opera by Gilbert and Sullivan. Okay, in which year was In Memoriam published? In which year was In Memoriam A-H-H published? This is a wonderful way of collaborative learning, isn't it? which is the year in which In Memoriam was published. That is the year in which Tennyson became Dash. That is the year in which Tennyson became Dash. Amina, okay, Amina, good evening. 1850 and Tennyson became Poet Laureate. Tennyson became Poet Laureate, which is the poem, a collection of 12 Arthurian legends that he writes. Words were died, yes. Which is the collection of 12 Arthurian legends that he died, that he wrote? It is Mortadadar and Idols of the King. Yeah, Idols of the King. Where the first published poem of the Idols of the King was Mortadadar. Mortadadar, okay? Mortadadar, Idols of the King. Tennyson, towards the end of his career, wrote what? Towards the end of his career, Tennyson wrote what? Tennyson wrote poetic drama. Tennyson wrote poetic drama. Okay, I will continue with Victorian poetry tomorrow also, but let me just give you an overview. Oh, Rekha, I'll, I'll do one thing from next month, I'll do uh, at another time, okay? Every day, not every day, every month, not every day at eight. Every month I'll do another time, okay? That'll be amazing because all of you can, uh, attend then. Crossing the bar. Yeah, the dreamer last poems. Uh, in which year was Robert Browning born? Robert Browning. Robert Browning. 1812. Don't forget. 1812. Tennyson was born in which year? Very important year of, uh, year of birth. Tennyson, 1809. Robert Browning, 1812. 
Elizabeth Barrett Browning, 1806. She was older than all of them. And Matthew Arnold, 1822. He was a baby, 10 years younger. Snigdha, just go on revising cross connecting, then you will get it. Hey, if you join my daily quizzes, I have made lots of daily quizzes with fun, fun ways of remembering chronology. In my daily quizzes, there are so many quizzes with fun ways of remembering chronology. Just reminding you. Now, what is the po early poem by Robert Browning subtitled, A Fragment of a Confession? The early poem by Robert Browning subtitled, The Fragment of a Confession. Yes, Charles Dickens also 1812. Robert Browning and Charles Dickens both 1812. Thank you Abhinaya for telling me that, reminding me that. Pauline, fragment of a confession. Charles Dickens wrote Pauline, a fragment of a confession. That's right. Then uh, Charles Dickens wrote Stratford. What genre does it belong to? Stratford. Thank you, Akarshika. What a wonderful name you have, Akarshika. Stratford by uh, Pauline is what? It was his first play, his first play. If you want to join daily quizzes or mock test or uh, any of our programs, uh, please WhatsApp me. I will tell you, I can't tell you in the live uh, video. WhatsApp me, 9037357688. Will you please like the video? You could also share the video in your group so that more people can benefit. Will you also share the video? Yeah. Stratford is his first play, I was saying. And he wrote so many dramatic monologues. All that we will uh, deal with tomorrow also. There was a long dramatic poem that uh, Browning wrote in 12 books. Do you know the name? The long dramatic poem in 12 books. The Ring and the Book. That is the book. The ring and the book. Now, uh, just rapid fire on, um, you know, um, just rapid fire on all the um, authors. Who wrote Aurora Lay in 1856, published in 1856? Aurora Lay, published in 1856. Elizabeth Barrett Browning, The Ring and the Book by Robert Browning. Elizabeth Barrett Browning wrote Aurora Lay. Aurora Lay has a female poet, a woman poet. Okay, we'll deal with all that tomorrow also. Which are the two pastoral elegies? Which are the two famous pastoral elegies by Matthew Arnold? Tiresis, Scholar Gypsy, one more is there, Rugby Chapel. Tiresis, Scholar Gypsy, Rugby Chapel. In which year did uh, the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood come into being? In which year did the Pre-Raphaelite Brotherhood come into being? That is the same year as the publication of uh, Communist Manifesto. Do you know that? 1848, yeah. Uh, Pratibha is reminding me Aurora Lay has nine books. Nine books is the number of the Sibyl. Number of the Sibyl, 1848, uh, the PRB revolution happened. Yes, remember In Memoriam, 1850. D.G. Rossetti's The Blessed Damosel is also published in 1850. D.G. Rossetti's The Blessed Damosel, also 1850. Okay, so thank you guys. I have my every day at seven starting right now. Every day at seven is a three month course that has just started. Uh, I'm going live in Zoom as well as YouTube and people are using the links for a lifetime. If you spend money one time, you can get my lectures for a lifetime. Uh, that is every day at seven. For any jankari or information, WhatsApp me 9037357688. Thank you. I hope you liked this live class. I will be back tomorrow with Victorian Poetry Part 2. Bye-bye. Love you all. Bless you all. I wish all of you pass with Net and JRF. This is going to be awesome. This one hour you spend, we spend together is going to be awesome. You just read extra. You are going to pass this time. I trust 
my prayers. I believe that you will pass if you're doing hard work. Thank you.